Ami Ayalon, welcome back to our program. Thank you. So, can you explain what your Prime Minister has been saying to Israeli media about his view of a partial end to this? He said he's ready for a partial deal with Hamas for some of the hostages. Now, as far as I was aware, the people of Israel's first goal is to get all of the hostages back. The so-called Israeli plan that the Biden administration stated was precisely for that, or for all. Some people say, like the Hostage Families Forum, they condemn it. Um, they say he's just walked back from everything. What's a partial deal for the partial release of hostages? It's the only way for him to survive in power. That's it. It's the only way for him to make sure that the war will not come to an end, and, uh, and this is what he's doing. And I think that he really believes that we do not understand, but we do understand most of the Israelis. And today, uh, our prime minister do not represent the people of Israel. Uh, in a recent poll, I have here the figures, 76% uh, of the Israelis uh, believe that he should resign immediately. 65% um, demand elections today, and 74, 75% believe that the only way to end this war is by a political achievement that will enable us to bring back all the hostages, second, to end the war, and third, to create a regional coalition mm -hmm. that will, will, will create a better uh, reality and, and, and more safety to Israel. I am really surprised by what you said in mm -hmm. that he doesn't want to end the war. Right. I mean, that sounds crazy to me. Why? Well, why? Why not? Israelis are uh, being killed, Palestinians are being killed, uh, Israel's losing its moral high ground, it's becoming a we pariah. Call it, we call it toxic leadership. In the academia, toxic leadership is a great charisma of a person who leads many people, uh, but he leads them to the wrong place, to the end of Zionism. This is what he's doing. You have to understand that the first cabinet, in the first cabinet meeting, when we went to war after the 7th of October, and we had to go to war, because after the massacre, etc., we it was a war of defense. But the decision of do not discuss the day after. What is the meaning? I'll tell you something, in this war, when you send your people, your youngster, to kill, and many of them will die there, when you tell them that there is no political goal to this war, immediately what happened? The goal, the war becomes the, 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 the end and not the mean. Mm -hmm. Now, when the war becomes the end, the goal of itself, this is exactly what we see today in the Middle East. We know how to start wars. This government do not know and do not want to end this war. OK, I'm going to get back to Gaza in a second, but Netanyahu himself said in this so-called interview conversation uh, that they might be prepared for another war, that the, the, the real so-called kinetic combat phase mm -hmm. in Gaza could be coming to an end, but that they will move troops and forces to the north. That means Hezbollah. Are you prepared? Do you think this is going to happen, a, a full-scale war again, a la 2006, whether with, I, Le with Lebanese Hezbollah? Whether I think it is a real scenario, um, if we shall not change our perception of ourselves and the Middle East, uh, it is a real scenario. Not because somebody won't, because this is the only option. If we believe only in power, mm -hmm. if we believe that war is not the last option, is the first and only option, this is what we shall see. Our security doctrine should be based on two pillars. Yes, we shall always have to maintain and to preserve a huge military power, but in a, it, will not, it will never be enough unless we understand diplomacy, unless we can speak in two languages, we shall not be secure and we shall lose our identity. And why has it taken eight months for the people like yourself? I know you've been saying it because uh, you're out of, you know, governing Shimbet, et cetera, right now. Well, because I'm in a minority in my, in my people. Okay, you're That's a minority. Okay. But it's suddenly becoming 
out there, like mm -hmm. the head, the head of, uh, of, of the IDF, has mm -hmm. clearly empowered his spokesman, mm -hmm. Admiral Hagari, um, who said last mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. that it's just throwing sand into the eyes of the Israeli right. people, saying that you can defeat Hamas. More and more people are beginning to <coughs> say what you're telling me now, that there needs to be a day after plan. Yes. Um, I, I don't blame, but I think that uh, I expected more from our generals. Um, I still remember during the first intifada, uh, when Rabin uh, gave us an order, instructed us to break the bones, and, and some commanders did it, literally. And, um, and the chief of general staff uh, told publicly to Rabin, uh, Mr. Defense Minister, um, this is not a military phenomena. This is a social, political, a violent phenomena. And I expected our generals to say it as early as possible. The moment that the cabinet accepted this decision, not to discuss the day after, it was clear that this is a never-ending war. And they should do it much earlier. Do you think, because you saw the justified horror that was unleashed over the weekend when a picture mm -hmm. of a wounded Palestinian yes. tied to the hood of one of your military vehicles mm -hmm. uh, was, was driven out of the Janine area and mm -hmm. the Palestinians accused your forces of, of using mm -hmm. them as a, as a human shield. The Israeli military then shortly thereafter said those forces violated orders and standard operating procedures. They'll be investigated. Mm -hmm. um, not many people have faith in the investigation because there's very rarely those investigations happen. But what's happening? I mean, are you saying that this war without any political end is also mm -hmm. causing this kind of stuff, including the mm -hmm. selfies of your forces inside Gaza, taking pictures with the rubble, with this, with that? I mean, it's just not very nice at all. No, it's horrible. Do you feel they're losing their morality, their humanity? Not they. We are losing. We are losing our identity as people, as Jews, and as human beings. Did you ever because think you would say that? You're the former head of Shin Bet. Yes. Did you ever think you'd get yes, to a point? Yes, I said it many times. And I said it in the Shin Bet when we tried to think of uh, our code of ethics. I said, uh, we, when we go to war, um, people do not think, when you send us to war, you do not send us to negotiate. You send us to kill. Now, we are born with the idea of you shall not kill. And now you tell me, OK, you go to war, kill all the enemies. Now, the idea that I have the right to kill. Now, with the time, uh, it becomes nature. We do not ask why. The only question that we ask when we go to war is how to kill, whether we should use a knife or a gun or a missile. But it's become a second nature, and this is a danger in every war. And we saw, we saw it, you know, during all the history. What Americans did in Iraq and Afghanistan, what we did in the past, unless we understand that every war must end. This is what we shall see. We shall lose our identity as a democratic human beings, and we shall create a reality of never-ending war. So given that there might be something big breaking out against uh, Lebanon, I mean, look, this is what one of the most um, respected um, military analyst in Israel, Amos Harel of, of Haaretz, yes. says, um, Nasrallah, who is obviously the mm -hmm. head of Hezbollah, apparently suspects that Israel is headed for a general war and is preparing his organization for that possibility. Mm -hmm. You think that's right? Yes. It's uh, the only rational uh, decision. And then what happens? We shall have war. And then? We shall have war. And, and after that? And we shall have more war. And we shall stop, and later we shall have more war. We have to understand, you know, there are two blind spots for us Israelis. Until today, by the way, what should we learn after the 7th of October? Which was probably the most horrible moment in our history. 
We should learn, first of all, that we shall not have security as long as we shall not end occupation. This is what Hamas told us. And we shall not have democracy as long as we shall not end the occupation. Now, we refuse to see it. We see it today, if, if I read the polls, more than we saw it. And this is the opportunity. Our government do not see it. Yoav Gallant do not probably understand it. But he doesn't have the courage to say it because his base, he has to be elected. So the political power today is not in the hands of the politi political leaders. The political power is somewhere in the street. And we, people in the street, we do not understand it. And we understand it more and more. And this is why the demonstrations are very, very important. But this is why the international community has a role. Because the international community has to understand, yes, we have to save ourselves from ourselves. But it is not a conflict between Israel and Palestinians anymore. It is a regional conflict that will create a huge impact on the international community. Do you think President Biden and the administration and Israel's friends are saving the Israeli political leaders from themselves or not? I think that they are trying to do their best. Uh, the way I understand the American leaders and president, um, he has to be elected. And he's blamed from both sides. So I'm not, I'm not here to give him any. I think that he is the only leader who really believes that we can create a different and a better reality. And he's doing all what he can in order to help us to save ourselves. Can I ask you something? Because I was struck by what you said. This is what Hamas told us. You know, you said the, the business about the ending right. the occupation, etc. Right. I recently spoke with, mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody you know very well, uh, the doctor Yuval Biton, who, who saved uh, Yahya Sinwar's life in hospital, then became mm -hmm. an intelligence officer in the mm -hmm. prison service. Mm -hmm. He claimed that Israel, mm -hmm. all of you are all, Mossad, Shin Bet, mm -hmm. IDF, government, just didn't listen mm -hmm. when people like him who were talking to Hamas every single day mm -hmm. were saying this is what they think this is what they say mm -hmm. this is it he said Hamas learned a lot about Israel but not vice versa I'm just going to play what he told me on this regard mm -hmm. okay unfortunately the Israeli leadership did not study Hamas and a lot of people among us even in the intelligence service did not know and learn Hamas well enough all we needed to do was listen to them our attitude towards Hamas was arrogant we dismissed Hamas, and Hamas said everything it intended to do. But we didn't want to listen. Do you agree with that? Yes, of course. Uh, I don't agree to the fact that all of us, because all the leaders, all the directors of the Shin Bet, said it again and again. You know, I, I met Ronen during two years before. Who's Ronen? The seven. Ronen is the, the director of the Israeli Shin Bet today. Okay. Uh, during the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I told him, look, um, I understand that, you know, politicians and political leaders, you know, they are telling you exactly the policies that you should follow. But you have to tell them again and again and again, every day, every meeting, that this policy will lead us to a wave of violence. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I mean, this is exactly what I'm telling him. But Prime Minister did not listen. Why? I know why, because he preferred his political survivor, survival on the future of Israel. That's it. You have said survival requires a political solution and a two-state solution. Mm -hmm. um, that, uh, as you said, Hamas will only be defeated by a war in, in this war of ideas, right. which is offering the Palestinians hope. Now, um, we've heard leaked tapes and things like that. Uh, Netanyahu's most nationalistic Orthodox coalition members, mm -hmm. people like Smotrich, Ben Gavir, etc. Mm -hmm. They, you know, Smotrich, there's a leaked record, he spoke about preventing the occupied West Bank from becoming part of an independent Palestinian state, you know, and, and he's getting a lot of, uh, of power and putting more settlers on and empowering the settlers. Mm -hmm. Is that going to work? Are, the, uh, you know, uh, are they going to have the final say? Probably. If we shall not have the power and the courage uh, to change our policy, they will succeed. 
Now, Israel, uh, we did not have state for 2,000 years. Uh, we were born, we, all my generation, we were born to a reality in which a state is something obvious. It is not, unless we fight mm -hmm. against everybody who do not believe in Israel as a Jewish democracy. We shall not have Israel as a Jewish democracy. And unless we shall understand... You're talking about fighting internal of course, Israeli of opponents course, of a Jewish Unless democracy. we shall understand, again and again I'm saying it, that if we shall not end the occupation, we shall not have security. And if we shall not end this occupation, we shall not have democracy. We shall not have democracy and we shall not have security. And this is the end of the Zionist dream. Because the Zionist dream is a state of, 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 for Israel uh, with a specific identity. It is a Jewish democracy. Our parents did not come from Arab states and Europe in order to create a totalitarian regime. And nobody will accept it. You know, Palestinians are demanding freedom and they will fight for the end of occupation. And unless we shall understand that this piece of land is ours, but it is not only ours. We have only, only two options, to divide it and to keep our identity or not to divide it and to lose our identity and to lose our security as well. So does this worry you then? Because uh, this is Netanyahu again in this conversation about moving from the first, second, and now the third mm -hmm. stage in Gaza. Mm -hmm. The third step will be the creation of a new security regime in the Gaza Strip, mm -hmm. the removal of Israel's responsibility for day-to-day -day life there, and the creation of a new security reality for the citizens of Israel. What do you think that means? Do you it, think that means carving out a whole piece of Gaza? Oh, okay. This is what it means. Uh, for Netanyahu, he is lying to us because Netanyahu is not stupid. He is the brightest person that I met. But this is toxic leadership. Mm -hmm. He is selling us something that he knows that will not work. He knows the Palestinians. He knows that they will go on fighting. He knows that they will not accept any Israeli leadership that does not give them their national liberty and of occupation. He knows it. But he's trying to sell us something that probably, but most Israelis, again, he do not represent the 75% of his people. Finally, if a war happens between a full scale between Israel and Hezbollah, um, uh, there are those who are very concerned, like the United States sources apparently, that the Iron Dome, your anti-missile yeah. shield, could be overwhelmed in the opening strikes. Do you worry about that? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. There is no ultimate solution. And uh, the capabilities of Nasrallah and Hezbollah is totally different from what we faced in the past. Mm -hmm. As long as we are fighting in Gaza, he will have the legitimacy to go on fighting. But the moment that we shall achieve the end of war or ceasefire, he do not have the right to go on fighting because we do not understand. You know, Palestinians are suffering. Thousands of them. You know, uh, millions. millions probably led from their homes and the whole south of Lebanon is destroyed. So, yes, they will not do anything against him as long as he represents the Shia community and they are dying. He represents the Lebanese national aspirations and they know that he will bring them death and humiliation. So we have to see it connected. And this is why it is so important. It is not only important to bring back our hostages, that this is the moral victory that we, are, that, that we want to achieve immediately. It is important to understand that unless we shall end this war in Gaza, we shall not create a better reality in the North. Ami Ayalon, thank you very much. Thank you.